Hello, this is Hot Indonesia, and welcome to all of you watching in the Netherlands. I'm Dalton Tanaraka in Jakarta. Here is this week's HI Hot List status report. We assess the latest COVID-19 developments, good and bad. News Blues, is it important to have an English language newspaper? We talk with Andy Bayuni, senior editor of the struggling Jakarta Post. And call out, a politician apologizes for a sexist post. How big is this cultural problem? Here are my co-hosts each and every week, and back from a one-week absence is Sandrina Malakiano, Deputy CEO of Polmark Indonesia from her home in South Tangerang, and Santiago Uno, former Vice Governor of Jakarta from his home in South Jakarta. Here is hot topic number one, status report. Last week was the worst week for coronavirus cases. This week could be even worse. Total infections now top 200,000, second most in Southeast Asia and in the top 25 in the world. So on Wednesday night, the Jakarta governor pulled the emergency break and said strict restrictions will return on Monday, September 14th. Among the reasons, reports that more than 100 doctors have died of COVID-19. The president had said on Monday that health is the key to economic recovery. Is the gradual relaxing of restrictions, uh, malls, restaurants, salons, and others, a mistake? Uh, I wouldn't say a mistake because you have to do it sooner or later. It depends on how the people deal with the situation. The key is the discipline of the people. And this is the, 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 the core problem that we are facing. Uh, if they are disciplined in implementing the health protocols, then I'm sure the numbers would decline. But we all witness on a daily basis now how people are going back into their daily activities. They think, they believe, or they say that they are implementing health protocols, but not on a strict manner. I mean, you wear the mask when you go uh, on public transportations or, or on your way to the office, but then when you arrive, you take it off or when you have meals uh, during lunch break, you take it off and after that you forget, you mingle with others. This is the cause of the widespread. And uh, well, for Jakarta alone, if, if you see the numbers uh, have increased uh, enormously, but this is also due to the, the increase of numbers of tests being held or, or done by the government. Right, right. That's, Why? that's, that's, that's understood. But okay. Yes. Sandy, Sandy, what can you say about the loss of medical personnel, the deaths of frontliners, so especially sad? Yeah, it's very, very disheartening. My heart's uh, prayers and thoughts will be with the doctors, uh, all the medical frontliners and uh, the health workers. We are really in need of reassessing the situations. It has been six months since uh, the first COVID cases was announced. I, earlier in the week, I met with uh, Pa Eric Tohir, a very good friend of mine who's now leading uh, the charge. And he's uh, asking us here at Hot Indonesia to also uh, build a new narratives. The government and stakeholders must ramp up triple T, testing, mm -hmm. uh, contact tracing, and treatment, while the people in general, businesses, uh, and the government needs to reinforce the 3M, which, which is basically uh, face mask, uh, wash your hand, and social distancing. It's really at the heights of uh, 3,000 new cases per day. It's getting, getting really very, very disconcerting. Okay, Sandy, I want to ask you a little bit about the economy thing at the end of this segment. But first, I want to hit a couple quick topics. The coffin punishment, you guys saw about that, the buzz of social media. Um, in East Jakarta, those not wearing a mask could have a choice. You pay a fine, you do public service for one hour, or you lay in a coffin for five minutes to think about their action. You know, I don't know who thought this up, but that last option was quickly stopped. Um, if anything, Sandrina, at least this brought public attention to what you're saying, public adherence to guidelines. Yes, uh, because, you know, um, that I do not agree about people uh, having to go into a coffin as a punishment because it's It was risky. their choice. It was their choice. Yeah. No, but it's risky. I mean, if they choose to do that, it could be also another means of, of, of getting or, or, or uh, getting infected by the virus if somebody else has been in it. But uh, that was a <laughs> okay, local. Not, that was a local. Yeah. 
that 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 was a local initiative by the people there, but it was uh, stopped immediately after people protested that 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 way. But um, in terms of socialization, you have to use many forms of of languages or mean use uh, different means because people understand differently. Like people who are highly educated would understand if you. Uh, describe to them uh, the danger of this COVID virus, but people in the uh, lower uh, social status, uh, sometimes it takes more to scare them, maybe like the, the coffin there by the side of the road, which you can find in almost every sub-district now in Jakarta. It's an, uh, a local initiative by the people also. Uh, yeah, you okay, put the I, data there, but yeah, then I, if I, they see it, they get, oh, okay, I might die. or. Some people are more scared that they have to self-isolate for two weeks and then they cannot work, they get no money. So I do agree that there has to be different types of socialization and education for the yeah, people. Yeah, and I think they probably disinfected the coffin. I mean, I, I, you know, they're not that uh, stupid, I think. But anyway. Well, um, who knows? Okay, Sandy, Sandy, uh, let's wrap this segment up. You know, uh, it looks like a lost year for business and the economy. But what is your, succinctly, uh, what is your advice or, or give maybe a, a, a ray of optimism as we head into the final quarter. Well, uh, I, you know, also earlier in the, in the week, I met with the trade minister, uh, met with senior government leaders. Uh, the numbers actually is quite uh, promising because we have hit rock bottom and the projections for uh, third quarter is going to still to be minus, but it is going to be much better than second quarter. So we're on the rebound. But we should not let the possibility of a second wave uh, derail this economic recovery. So guys, I have to remind over and over again and should not be tired, is to have a strict protocol of COVID-19. Wear a mask, wash your hand, and do social distancing. Yeah, because as the president said, health is the key to reviving the economy. Okay, Hot Indo will continue shortly with News Blues. The country's only English language newspaper is deep in red ink. Jakarta Post senior editor Andy Bayuni with the problem next. You're watching Hot Indonesia with Sandrina, Sandy, and me. Here's hot topic number two, news blues. The urgent community appeals went out in August. The English language newspaper Jakarta Post would have to cut 70% of its staff without new subscriptions. Its print circulation is only 6,000, but a staff cut would also affect its digital content. Does this country need an English newspaper? I say, of course. You know, there used to be other newspapers as well, English uh, papers, but they couldn't beat the Post, leaving it the last one standing. Andy Bayuni is senior editor of the Jakarta Post. He joins us from Jakarta. Um, Andy, the Post's been around since 1983. You've been there almost that long, more than 30 years. Why is it important for it to survive? Well, I think the country needs a good, incredible English language newspaper. I think we have been doing that, uh, that role for the last 37 years. Uh, we are the only one. There have been others. Uh, but I think the problem is that uh, the business model is not there. Now with everyone going digital, the business model even makes less sense. Uh, Jakarta Post is going through these uh, difficulties uh, right now. We are sort of scaling down, but we are going to be around. I mean, we just uh, have to make huge cuts on, on spending, but we are preparing a strategy to move forward because we know that Indonesia, given our in the, the country's rising profile, economically, politically, culturally, even in sports, uh, we need a, in, uh, the voice of Indonesia out there for the international community. Something that exactly what you're doing the, through the, the Indonesian channel as well. Why has it come to this? I mean, if you have the monopoly now, being the only English language newspaper, um, shouldn't you be doing okay? Well, we, we should, but uh, the, the reality is print is declining and this is global, right? Uh, fewer and fewer people are actually reading the physical newspapers. They're switching to online. And in online, we are not the only one. Uh, and the Jakarta Globe and a few others are still around, actually building their, their, their presence. And, 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 and I think the, 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 the market or the competition, put it that way, will now be shifting to digital. Print is, is definitely dying. Uh, I'll give it a few more years, uh, if, if that. Uh, uh, but definitely, I think everybody's shifting to online. And this is where we have to be creative in presenting the best content 
to re, you know to reflect Indonesia uh, to, to the global community. Okay, Sandy, question for Andy. Hi, Andy. I'm. Um, we are one of that six thousand uh, that still receive the Jakarta Post, and we are here to support you. Uh, but I guess uh, everywhere in the world we're seeing declining revenues and how print is struggling to stay relevant. But Jakarta Post have a very strong content uh, and I think it is the adaptations uh, of how this content could be delivered in particular to the new demography which is the millennials. Now, my question is, Jakarta Post has always been identified with the uh, uh, more established, uh, uh, more senior audience. Is there a new strategy for Jakarta Post to pivot into the millennials as well as uh, bringing more strong digitally uh, content uh, focus uh, materials? Yes, uh, definitely. I think print is really for, for the, the aging um, readers. Uh, we know that because we do surveys uh, every year. And digital is where the, 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 the young audience is. And we have, when we shifted to digital, we have our own online version. Uh, we also learned that the, the young, uh, young audience, they want the, 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 the information and news presented in differently. Uh, not just in terms of the, 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 the medium uh, with video or sound and all those things, but even in terms of the writing structure will have to be different because the, the young people, they, you know, they have different way of looking at news. The big difference, of course, now is they want the, the news, the information uh, uh, real time, not 10 o'clock at night or not tomorrow morning when the print is, reaches their, their house. So we are, there, there is a strategy, I think it's all, all uh, media outlets are doing this digitally. And we realize that the biggest audience is actually the young people and we have to serve the way they, uh, they, they want to be served. But I, I think in terms of content, uh, there are some, still some uh, parts where we determine what would be uh, the best uh, because we have to keep the, the young people also informed. Also, not just what they want, but what they need as well. And uh, I think this is some the challenge for the editors to find what is it that the, the young people need to be build their awareness about the you know the environment, about their position in, in the country and globally as well. Yeah, you know, Andy, I think you and I are not far apart in age. I mean, I, I still like to hold the, the physical paper in my hand and you know have a cup of coffee. Um, Sandrina, question for Andy. Yeah, hi, Ms. Andy. I too am a Jakarta Post uh, subscriber, but the online version. Um, the pandemic has also changed the way of life of people, so we tend to now uh, avoid touching things that come from outside, including newspapers. Uh, even uh, my other daily newspapers that still come here, we do not read them anymore. We go and read the online uh, version. But uh, as you just underlined that less and less people are reading uh, newspapers, now people tend to go online with the uh, shorter, more dynamic versions of the news. And we conducted a national survey at the beginning of this year, and it could be seen that those who read newspapers daily or almost daily is only about 10%. The English readers would be far less. and. 39 uh, access, 39 percent access social media, 22.3 uh, read online news, 88 percent they watch TV. So with this situation, do you believe that you still uh, should uh, keep printing and distributing newspaper in, in the physical form? Or uh, maybe in the near future, just stop producing uh, altogether and just uh, sell the newspaper online? Yeah, well, at some stage, I think we have to start printing. Uh, there is the question of the economies of scale. I'm sorry, Dalton, <laughs> but one, one of these days you may be deprived of your of physical newspaper. Everybody is shifting online, uh, irrespective of age or generation, uh, because that's the way people now are uh, getting their news and information. Uh, Sandrina, you mentioned uh, social media. Most people now, I know that they get their news and information through their social media with friends sharing links to stories, uh, 
uh, to news uh, news stories in on their social media platforms uh, accounts, and this is how most people now get their news and information. Now the question, uh, and I think even Jakarta Post and most media outlets, uh, established media outlets, we are also present in uh, on the social media, uh, hoping that uh, people will be sharing uh, the links uh, to our stories. But the competition is so fierce, it's so wide. Uh, people are getting information from all kinds of uh, news outlets, uh, some of them credible, some of them don't practice journalism. Some like us continue to be loyal in practicing good journalism because we know that builds credibility and that builds trust as well. I have a couple of ideas just to close this, Dalton. I think uh, a lot of Indonesians, especially the young generations, wants to have English content. I mean, the hot Indonesia version is actually viewed by millions uh, every week. So I think the next future is collaborations whereby a very good established brand like Jakarta Post can go on a platform that uh, deliver, uh, have the ability to deliver to millions. And I think this is where Hot Indonesia and Jakarta Post should collaborate. And yeah, we you know, should- Yeah, we did that before um, in, in, in our previous uh, version, but Andy, let's talk about Jakarta Post, uh, the Indonesia channel, uh, working together on digital platforms, yeah? Well, let's talk later. And, and in the end, to wrap this up, you know, uh, let me make a pitch for you. You know, a monthly subscription to the Jakarta Post costs only 50,000 rupiah, and that's $3.40. Uh, you, you can buy, it, it costs more for a cup of Starbucks. So um, I think my slightly biased opinion, keeping English windows into this country is very important. Okay, Indy Bayuni, Senior Editor of the Jakarta Post, thank you very much for those insights and for your time. More Hot Indo is ahead. Call out why this political candidate wasn't having a sexist comment. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta. Here's hot topic number three, call out. Political candidate and former Hot Indonesia co-host Rahayu Saraswati likes to keep fit. Last week, she tweeted a photo of herself running. Democrat executive Chipta Pancha Laksana added this comment, quote, the thighs of the South Tangerang deputy mayor nominee are so smooth. Of course, our good friend Sarah would have none of that and replied, just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I can be harassed. To which Chipta then apologized, saying it is his style on Twitter. Sandrina... What do you say? Such a lame excuse. And oh my God, uh, I, I'm, I'm behind uh, Saraswati, Rahayu Saraswati all the way because this is a, a problem that most women here are still facing, discrimination uh, based on gender um, and they are uh, belittled just because they are uh, women. Uh, achievements, um, knowledge, uh, brains, uh, behavior is, is then put aside as if they do not exist. That is what's happened to Saraswati Rahayu, uh, Saraswati, I, I usually call her, uh, call her Sarah. And um, uh, it is, we have to fight this because the way like uh, this, this politician uh, belittled her, is is disgusting. I'm sorry to use that word, but it is disgusting. Um, we should not judge people by what they wear. I certainly would not do that. By for example, I'm wearing the hijab. I'm Muslim, but I would not say that I'm mo- more Muslim than others who do not wear the veil, because it's just unfair to judge people because of what they wear. And people should have the freedom to wear whatever they want. And Rahayu Saraswati was wearing what was suitable for the occasion. She was doing some sports. Sure, it's, a, would... it's another case of men objectifying a, a woman. And, you, know, you know, Sandy, if a guy, if a public official does this on social media, imagine what goes on behind closed doors. I mean, we know in this country, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Sarah said she may report this guy to the police. Uh, I, I hope they settle it, but w- what's your take on this, Sandy? Uh, first of all, completely inappropriate. Um, we as a country actually have a long history with uh, women in leadership, and we, we actually uh, are very, very respectful of women in the positions of high office. Uh, we even have president, uh, a woman president. 
We have in the past uh, Armada Generals, who is uh, who's a woman, freedom fighters, and I think uh, intellectuals and, and leaders uh, who are basically make us proud as Indonesia. We have not only founding fathers, but also founding mothers. But these uh, sort of like very inappropriate uh, is not, uh, is not, it's more uh, an exception than, than the rule, more of a, I guess, a, a very minority occasions and completely irrelevant and out of date. Sandy, you really believe, I mean, I, I disagree. I, I hear harassment and comments about women's appearances and that every day. And I try to call them out as well, but I mean, it, it, I think it's bigger than, than people want to admit. I have, I, uh, I have a two young daughters who, who are actually, we, we discuss this a lot. And, and uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want this to happen to my, my daughters. And I think we, uh, as all Indonesians have, have to really create awareness that this is completely unacceptable. And I guess uh, uh, by, you know, I'm supporting uh, Rahayu Saraswati, I'm wearing her color, uh, and this is a rarely worn shirt. Uh, and I think uh, it, it put uh, more cost for her fight uh, in the political arena and, and for us to showcase this actually to make more people aware that uh, this is uh, completely inappropriate. Okay, it is feedback time. Let us know if you like or don't like what you see or hear. From the YouTube page of our partner TV1, Mayer posted this on our discussion of Bali tourism's desperate condition. We should be optimistic and believe we can achieve government deadlines. Optimistic but realistic, Mayer. And one more YouTube comment. I like how our president, Joko Widodo, always presents our culture with pride. Here's how to contact us with your feedback. Email at hotindo at the indonesiachannel.com or comment please do through our Hot Indonesia or Indonesia channel, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Final words and welcome back again, Sandrina. Thank you and thank you, Dalton, for sending me this. <laughs> so the, the team will uh, start competing on the 4th of October. Uh, good luck to Bali United. Uh, I will pr uh, really wear this uh, shirt. And um, to close this edition from my side, the 7th of September, 16 years ago, human rights activist Munir was murdered and the case remains unsolved until this very moment. The files have uh, disappeared and the mastermind behind this murder remains unpunished. So. Uh, from President SBY until Jokowi have given their promise. The people are demanding that they keep their promise to solve this case. And the uh, mastermind should be brought to justice because the people refuse to forget. Final word, Sandy. There is some concern that uh, the economy's uh, recovery is uh, going to be uh, having some slowing down effect because of uh, the COVID-19. So I would say you could do very simple things to help uh, the local economies. Buy local products from your local stores, support your communities while continue to wear face mask, uh, manage uh, maintaining social distancing, and always washing your hands. So be safe and be healthy, guys. Okay, and let me bring it down to kind of a real micro level now, you know, my final words. In these difficult times, just about everyone's tight on cash. Now, if you need help, I'm sure your family or good friends will give you what they can. But make sure that the money you ask for is for essential items, because if not, it will be probably pretty hard for you to get that assistance again. And that is Hot Indonesia for this week. For Sandrina Malakiano, Santiago Uno, I'm Dalton Tanaraka. Thank you for watching, and please join us again next time. Thank you.